This is a new survival Viking inspired cooperative early access game. You can check it out on Steam. It costs $20 and within days already has a tremendous amount of hype just brewing a storm. A tidal wave growing to swallow the world of early access medieval survival games. Already it's got overwhelmingly positive reviews, and a good number of them. And while I do have my own personal bias and reasons to be excited and hyped and definitely going to sugarcoat the crap out of this video, don't just take my word for it. So as you can see, there's a lot of people who are really enjoying the game and who are pleasantly surprised. Yeah, and I think a lot of you guys watching the video now might be wondering what this game actually does well. Uh, you know, it's survival early access games, right? And what it does uniquely. So we'll be covering that in the video. But I do want to quickly say that I'm already on the hype train. I can clearly see that a lot of you guys are in this community. And it just kind of fits overall with the theme of games that we all play together. So we should play together. So starting Monday, I'm actually going to be starting a server. Monday through Friday, we're going to be running through this game cooperatively. I'm going to be playing it dedicatedly, and I hope that we have a good time. So I want to do a co-op run through. I want to do some PvP tournaments. And who knows where this game can actually go, because let me just say right now, it's looking like the foundation for this game is well ahead of most survival games. And oh my god, it is so much further beyond a lot of the games that I used to hype up back in the day, like like months ago, like seasons ago, whatever, games like Rend, where the, it was like this big Viking Ragnarok inspired MMO survival game that turned out to stretch itself too thin and be poop, or maybe like the Warhorn, which is supposed to be sort of like this city kingdom building style, you know, fantasy medieval survival-ish game that stretched, stretched too thin and yeah. And then this game, and then that game, and yeah, so we've been there, we've done that, we played a lot of games that have stretched themselves too thin, but Valheim knows what it wants to be. And that is, well, it, it, what I've said, what have you seen so far on the trailer, basically that's it. It's not going to try to be a giant massive MMORPG, it's not trying to be this sprawling epic that has a single player and co-op, it's not even trying to do really properly PvP and PvE. It's mainly a co-op survival experience set with a Viking mythology. And it is focused, and what makes it unique, on hunting big boss monsters and surviving in this environment, in this fantasy, which generally, I mean, it's almost low fantasy until you get to the trolls, you know, until you get to the big freaking, you know, giant monsters. So I really do like that mix of aesthetic theme, and I think the mechanics lend themselves well to this, you know, world-built setting, which, I mean, we just know it, right? It's, it's Viking mythology. Which, again, we've seen other games try to do either that or other Euro fantasy uh, stuff and things, but, man, they just have not worked. Again, played a lot of them, but Valheim, it's already working. It's already above and beyond those games in that specific niche. And then, generally, just in terms of performance and polish, better than most survival games, I think we're going to see this game really... I mean, it's already taking off, but I think later on, in terms of critically the content that the game is going to have, I think we can trust this game to completely deliver. And I'm saying that day one, early access. Wow, I think this game is going to keep the hype alive. But okay, it's co-op and early access, but uh, how co-op is it? So it is not an MMO. This is not a game that is spreading itself to thin. It is going to be one player, like you can play it solo, and I think it's probably going to be an enjoyable experience, though it's recommended to play with three to five players, that's about a sweet spot, which is kind of a small party. You know, generally a lot of MMOs kind of run with like four players, five players, six players, something like that, so that's probably going to be a really good vibe and feel. Um, I might replay this game a couple times, um, just two player, something like that, but yeah, three to five players is what's recommended, but it does go up to ten players at least right now. Unlike other games, which I could say maybe are MMO lights or maybe could softly expand a little bit bigger and better later on, like Ark and, and, you know, Rust has really big servers that eventually expanded. No, I think this game is still going to focus on that smaller group sort of play. So not an MMO, not even really an MMO light. This is a fully focused cooperative survival experience, and I really appreciate that. There's actually been a few rants, and namely one that I specifically titled I wish more MMOs worked, where a lot of games kind of just make themselves MMOs, spread themselves too thin, um, and they add mechanics, and they kind of really reduce the quality of other mechanics to kind of allow for that to exist. You know, it's like, oh, you know, 100 players can run around the map, but then nobody really plays it, and it kind of is janky as hell. But this game, well, because it does focus on those smally party, you know, one to 10 player sort of experiences, it can have a more balanced experience, a more challenging, and more right feeling 
um, you know, gameplay loop, and then also, um, you know, not break or anything like that. Like, it just genuinely works, and it allows them to sort of expand the feature set just a little bit. Little subtle things that make such a big difference, especially when you're trying to be, I would say, more immersive in a survival uh, genre. So a couple of things to hint at, I mean, it's, just, it's a really big one, but uh, when you chop down trees, they actually fall down, uh, which is a big thing. I always love using the add-on in Minecraft that allows that to happen. But no, in this game, they literally arc fall down. They can fall down on buildings or other trees. They do damage. Those trees can, you know, kind of erupt from the ground or what have you. Um, and, you know, like there's actual physics-based interactions. Things actually do damage from the physics and the speed, like, a, you know, the tree rolling down the hill and it smacks into something. And you, you just kind of, you can't do that inside of an MMO or a game that's a little bit more multiplayer because it does have this more focused approach, it can have that little mechanic. And then there's gonna be other subtleties all throughout the game that really makes the experience very rich and again, immersive for this survival uh, feel and vibe, such as, you know, you it really wants to incentivize having like a fireplace inside of your hut, which is actually historically accurate for Vikings, even though I know this is mythology, but still you wanna actually have, you know, your fireplaces within your hut. And then also you wanna have like comfort items inside of your house so that you get more rested experience and then etc. A lot of like little tiny things that I know it's not really selling you on the game, but just know that the game is perforated with these little tiny hooks into them that just make it feel a little bit better. But uh, know that this game is not just a realistic mythological game, it is still very arcade. And in fact, in much of the footage that you see, you're gonna see a lot of people with very weird camera angles, like it's not first person, and it's almost kind of isometric the way that you kind of wanna play the game and the UI is really cartoony. I do hope that they pass on that and they actually make it a little bit better, but I kind of actually do appreciate it. I don't know, it's a little, okay, conflicting. I gotta play a little bit more, but just know that it is early access, things aren't final, but a lot of the game is also arcade. So, you know, like a lot of the times breaking things is instantaneous. Frankly, like even in Minecraft, a game that is so rapid, fast paced and casual, Breaking things takes a while and it's annoying and you know, it feels bad already You have to break a bridge because you made it a little bit wrong. You already feel bad So I do like that this game kind of you know rapidizes that just it's easier Um, and at the same time in other in more fun ways It is more challenging and I guess trivial and arduous Uh, you know like stuff like smelting or there's certain things that you do where you put an item in one end of a thing And then you got to go to the other end and put another thing in and it's like you have to kind of operate machinery and you have to actually really focus on crafting. The crafting itself is kind of a mini game. It's not just, okay, I put it in the furnace, fire and forget. And crafting is just either a uh, time gate or it's just something that you click and it's instantaneously done. So in every single, you know, survival game, which I think we played all of them, right? Like most of us have played most of these games. We know that there's give and take of the realism, which makes sense for survival games. And then also the arcadism, which makes sense for being an online, you know, game or what have you. So. Uh, what's fun, what's what's bad, a lot of these games give and take and they do different things, but I think that the balance and the flow state in this game is more preserved because of, okay, the things that are fun in survival games that are challenging, well, they put those in, and the things that are unfun, they generally have taken them out, at least in my opinion and what I like. Again, that is my bias. I'm going in with a lot of bias because, uh, you know, Viking mythology, it's, <clears throat> I'm, I'm really into it. I just, oh my God, I just actually finished um, Vinland Saga. And I just got God of War, been playing that. I've really been on a Viking hook, been watching historical documentaries. So this game kind of came at the right time for Skyboy. I'm enjoying it. I think you guys are too. Uh, the Viking aesthetic and Viking mythology is really trendy. And I think it just makes sense to set a survival game. There again, there have been a few, but this is finally one that's actually done right. And all the stars are really aligning. The gods have spoken. Um, it's time for a really good one to come out and become viral. And this is the one. Okay, so what are you actually doing in this game? I think like, I mean, really, I try to make these videos with the idea that the video does explain itself, but you probably have seen a lot of these mechanics in similar titles, and even like the upcoming New World has similar vibes and feels, but I think New World's a little bit spread thin. That's another one of those games. But in the end though, uh, the game is focused on conquering through uh, the procedural world. So to, to keep that in mind, it is a procedurally generated world and in a lot of ways, it's going to have sort of vibes of almost like a hardcore sort of Minecraft feel to the game. I mean, especially since you're going to have to be leveling the land and, you know, carving out different parts of the world for yourself, um, which, you know, maybe, hey, that looks like Worm Online. Again, this game looks like a lot of other games that are mixed reviews or nobody plays them. But this one is actually doing it right. It's actually popular. So we are going to be going through a procedural world 
that is going to be filled with mysticism. Like there's going to be, you know, from deers to goblins, trolls, and like giant magical creatures. That's a big thing. The co-op and the, the co-op aspect of the game is really, it comes to life from, yeah, sure, you're going to be building up your little huts to a little village, a settlement to maybe a little, you know, you have like a little castle of sorts. But you're going to be doing all this so that you can prepare to fight giant freaking bosses. Yeah. Uh, with it maybe uh, debatably a Soulsian style combat system that also has some more deeper RPG aspects from stuff like Skyrim. I want to say Skyrim, but you know, Elder Scrolls style games. So yeah, you're going to have like your clubs and you're going to have like your bows and stuff. But I think that again, it's those little nuanced mechanics that really make it a little bit better. Like there is sneaking, like proper sneaking and proper backstabs. There is proper like weight to the different items like a dagger. You don't really have a run. Uh, penalty you can just run for a really long time it's really hard to run with a giant warhammer but even with the warhammer you get a really cool special ability that knocks back enemies so there's a lot of really fun things going on with this that's not super bloated like an mmo where you get like five whole new abilities with one weapon and it changes like basically your class um and it's not the same time where it's like every single weapon is essentially the same they're just slightly different stats no there's different stats there's different feels and there's different abilities but it's it's just a really good balance. Again, I really, I truly appreciate that. Exploration is going to be a big part of it. There are going to be new biomes as the game gets added on. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But overall, you should know that there is already sailing. You're going to be building little rafts all the way to warships. And maybe even bigger and beyond from there. There will be different lands uh, that you can actually go and explore. And immediately already the reviews say that there is enough content in the game to justify the price. So from here, we're only going up. The sky's the limit, or I don't know what really is the limit in Viking mythology. How, where, how far does Yggdrasil go? I don't know, but anyways. So, yeah, Viking mythology, what are these monsters? They're big fucking giant mythological magical shits and things, and they will kick your ass. I like that. The game is, is really self-proclaimed as being brutal. It is a survival game, and it is a game that obviously you can see from the combat to the RPG mechanics will be more for maybe an older audience, especially with it pushing that, you know, low poly art style, which I'm kind of in love with. I really appreciate it. Something that's trending with a lot of horror games, this PlayStation 1 and older, you know, old school PC aesthetic. I'm loving it. It's very tastefully done. It's not just voxel and it's not just kind of shitty like Seven Days to Die. Like, I love that game, but I mean, we need a graphic pass. No, this game is done very tastefully with its low poly art style. Oh my God, definitely huge applause for that. And then at the same time, you know, exploration and, you know, hunting these monsters is really big important. Survival is important. We are going to be building a lot of big stuff. You know, you're going to be, ra you know, these giant long houses, these halls, uh, farms, settlements, outposts, maybe even a full castle, maybe multiple castles. Who knows where we can really push this game? We all just kind of started, but yeah. Um, speaking about that, about us all, we can't actually play on dedicated servers. And according to people who have really been testing and pushing the game, um, a lot of other content creators who have followings like myself, they jump, jump in with like 10 players. It just works. The game just works. And that's a big thing. Ah, oh, man, I recently tried playing Ark and Conan Exiles. Holy crap, it was so awkward playing. Especially Conan Exile just kept desyncing. It was so bad. It just kind they kind of just didn't work, which is why you didn't see gameplays of those yet on my channel. But this game, it just works. So freaking amazing with that. You just want to jump in, do some co-op, do some Viking mythological shit. Okay, here it is. Not only is the game polished in terms of raw mechanics, the physical gameplay, but then also the online and the community because it's popular, because it's hype and people are enjoying it is going to be more fun. It's going to be easier to make friends and have these, you know, memory making experiences. Yeah, a lot of people who review these kind of games like Glory of Victus or Life is Feudal and you have a bunch of games that have already name dropped. They tend to not mention the player base, the population. They tend not to mention the overall polish and the, the you know, the, the sentiment that the community has and just general players have, but that is important. So is this game hype? Yes, it is. Can you tell from my expressions, from my emotion, which I'm definitely the most emotive YouTuber on the planet, can you tell that I'm excited, that I'm looking forward to it? Yeah, okay, you do, you know it. So why aren't you playing it? Well, you probably just now found out about it. You're downloading it now. Okay, we'll be playing Monday. So yeah, we're all gonna be playing this Monday through Friday, um, I'm going to try to pick a better hours. I'll get, I'll announce that or put it in a comment below, but I'm going to go ahead and schedule a stream for that. I'm going to be streaming on YouTube, so make sure you definitely stay tuned and check out for that. But know whether you play right now immediately and jump on the, you know, hype train or whatever uh, and play with me or otherwise you just jump in alone later at a day or you just want to see where it goes. Yeah, well, I got to say the stocks for this are looking pretty good. Uh, I think that this is obviously it's overwhelmingly positive. People like it. I like it. It's just something that is it, there's been a hole 
in this community of this style of game really needed to exist. It finally does exist, and it looking right proper. Um, so I think it's going to do well, and I think later on, it'll only get better. So I do think that with it being more focused on low player counts and also being a survival game that probably, you know, procedurally generated, there's a lot of replayability. So I think a lot of communities and you just join their discord, um, then I think it's going to be very easy to find these experiences. Don't, don't feel stressed to buy right now. You can, and everyone's loving it and having fun. But even if you join in later, I think this is still going to be a safe buy. So if you're watching this video later, which you probably will because YouTube doesn't promote my stuff, um, probably took you a while to find this video, then do know that, uh, yeah, well, I'm going to give it my thumbs up. I think you should play it. And even later down the road, it's probably only be going to be better. But for those who want to jump on, uh, you know, Monday or today or whenever, um, very soon, do know that basically everyone's like, yeah, no, it's it's fun right now. Let's do it. Let's have, let, let's have a good time. And so, yeah, that's basically... Val Valheim. Now, there's probably a lot more nuances and things that I could talk about, but this is just an overview style game. I think the, the footage does explain itself fairly well, but I did want to kind of express a little bit more. Um, additionally, something a little bit more emotional, less like I'm just reading the box and more like this is why everyone is excited. I'm excited. You should be too. Let's play together because that's the point of this game. The point of this game is for us to play together. It's to do something that we haven't done before. And yet at the same time, being a survival game, it is something that we're kind of comfortable with. Let's jump on. Come on. Let's just, let's just have a good time. That's pretty much what this game is. So yeah, I think other titles, uh, just to end cap the video, games like New World just have this weight to them. You know, it's just like, there's this urgency and there's, you know, there are responsibilities almost when it comes to playing with a guild or as an MMO. And there's so much that's kind of lost in that sort of environment. But Valheim, as being, for even though it's self-explained as brutal and it is, you know, kind of a hardcore, almost soulsy and experience, it actually has more of a light-hearted feel to it where I can just jump in and play for a week or a weekend and have fun with my friends and just, you know, again, Viking mythological bullshit. And that sounds cool to me. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. But that's going to be it for uh, this introductory video into Valheim. Hope you guys check out uh, my stream Monday and play, literally play with me. Join my Discord links in the description, all the good stuff. And I do want to thank the Patreons. Um, we just have a few of them, but I want to build up this audience. I want to build up this community. Thanks so much, guys, for uh, supporting this with, you know, algorithm boosting, liking. And I, re I literally read every single comment. So I do want to hear your thoughts and feelings on this game and maybe some similar games because I'm all about doing new shit with you guys. And that's what I want to do. So let's keep the hype alive. And um, let's, you know, let's let's keep it going. It's the friends and family. That's why I start the videos like that, because it's it's you guys that make everything fun. It's, it's playing with you guys that makes playing games worth the while. Anyways, uh, if you play with me or with your friends or whatever, you know, whatever you're doing when you jump into Valheim, I do hope you find the fun that you're looking for. Much love, guys. I'll see you in the next one.